Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about high voltage cables. So let's dive right into it. So what exactly is the problem? Well, generally most of the time we use high voltage naked conductors, meaning when you see a transmission line, the conductor is naked. It does not have any clothes. Now that does work and that's how we electrified our majority of our world. That's not suited for every scenario. So some scenarios you may have a uh, you know, requirement where you have to bury the line. Whatever the reason, sometimes you may not even be lucky to bury it under soil. You may have to bury it under sea. So that sort of uh, situation creates a a requirement where you have to use cables basically conductor with insulator in those sort of scenario there are certain challenges it's not a big issue if you want to bury like let's say 220 uh, volt line that's like basic 11 kv eh, minor inconvenience but you can do the moment you start to cross 100k uh, and then 200k 500k 700k 800k at that point in time the challenges become very seri uh, serious and it has to be managed accordingly it's not as simple as you may think i can guarantee you that so Let's dive deep into it. So what are the logic requirements behind it? Like what does the cable should do? First cable has to do multiple things. So it's not just like, okay, it's just a thing. It has to do multiple, meaning it has to provide strength for cooling. For example, when you're talking about naked conductors that are in transmission wire, uh, generally most of the time they are AC. Uh, so what does that mean? That simply means the core is unused because of skin effect. So they put stainless steel, meaning even if the core conductors that are car carrying the current is aluminum or copper, it generally would be uh, only traveling in the skin. So they are like, okay, skin should be made out of aluminum awesome good conductivity but the core again electricity is not flowing there so you put stainless steel benefit you can extend the length between the pole much longer meaning you will reduce your pole cost and if you really want even more advanced system you can have like aluminum and then uh, copper pipe in that pipe you can have carbon fiber strands benefit now the pole gaps basically pole to pole gap would be even longer so there are certain ways you can handle that those conductors have to handle like gravity they have to design to like okay i'm gonna be like you know span could be 10 meters 50 meters it has to be able to handle that here you may think oh it's just laying there it does not have to worry but well that is true it's not true when it's been made and when it's being deployed that's the biggest issue it has to provide strength for pulling because you may think like hey it's a it's just cable at the end of the day you're just gonna lay it that's not true if you design the structural strength based on that the moment engineers will try to deploy it like by pulling it it will break apart or compromise the insulation so it has to provide strength again it's a very uh, awkward scenario because you are overbuilding something just for one sake but such is life so like why we have to overbuild satellites not because it has pain, uh, pain to dealing with in space just so it can survive the rocket launch so something similar goes here it has to provide far more strength than you may think because some, again you are pulling it most of the time so it has to have enough strength where it's like that will not damage the any structure inside it protection against element that's common obviously you want to make sure the soil dirt uh, contamination moisture seawater uh, rainwater those things don't directly end up making love inside it so protections against element and some scenarios you may be very unlucky you may have to deal with sharks uh, i'm not joking that's a real thing uh, sometimes you also have to deal with rats uh, you know things that can chew through steel wires so you have to put some serious consideration how the heck you're going to manage that and then we come to resistance to electrical fault because again okay, it is carrying electricity and you may be talking about a cable that could literally carry one gigawatt two gigawatt 10 plus gigawatt so at that point in time there has to be some redundancy built into it where it can like i got this again normal few kilowatt nobody cares the moment you start to pump that kind of power that kind of voltage it has to be able to handle electrical fault uh you know uh, safely basically it should not go boom because here's deal at high voltages you do not have spark if you have any malfunction you do not have spark you have a boom because here's deal normal sparks oh it can have one megawatt of uh, flash pulse these sort of cable they have one megawatt continuously running so, so their flash pulse could literally vaporize like you know if you have an excavator uh, bucket going there it can literally vaporize the teeth that's how powerful these things are. So it has to be able to fail safely. It should be able to handle electrical loads calmly. It's like, I got this. This is why I was built. I got this. So that's the logic behind it. It's not just like, okay, uh, conductor, insulator, done. You have to design far more complicated than that. So how it's a build. Now, first thing you choose your conductor based on cost. Obviously you would like to use copper, but most of the time copper cost is so high that it's like, bro, let's just deal with aluminum. So that's the whole point. And on top of that, you also have to select the design. Design is you have compressed stranding and you have compact stranding. Now, you, why don't you use solid core? Again, it will just become like a thick rod. So every time you bend it, it will crack. You will have voids and good luck. Human will not be able to handle it. You would need hydraulics everywhere to handle it. So we use stranded. And again, it also allows flexibility. 
flexibility. So that's awesome. But here's the deal. If you have uncompressed, basically just uh, circle, 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 like exactly like this, you have void spaces. Those void spaces will be filled by some gases. Consequence, you have ludicrously high voltage there. You will have plasma arc there. Literally, you have coronal ejection inside there. And that will instantaneously destroy your insulation. It's like insulation, bye bye. So you compact it. Compacting it reduces the voids that are there and making it more efficient. Now compact is a bit more expensive. Compressed is like a good compromise between the cost of this and like you know just uh, if you are going for very long cable many times people use compressed uh, but if you are like hey I can afford it you will go with compact and again if you are burying it under sea generally you will find compact. Underground uh, compressed. So that's just the conductor layer. After that, you put semiconductor layer. Now that may sound odd, it's like, why the heck you are putting neither an insulator nor a conductor? Why the heck you are putting semiconductor there? Well, you have to understand, I specified the voltage are idiotically high. So meaning all these spots, voids, they have very high potential. Basically, electricity wants to make love there. So strain here in this location is too goddamn high. Consequence, it will degrade the insulation here. So if you do not take care of that, your cable will literally rot itself in around a year or so. And again, I'm exaggerating generally, maybe five, 10 years. So what do you do? Again, these sort of cables are idiotically expensive. I'm like to give you a context, $400 per foot. Let that sink in. So how do you make sure you put basically a subconductor layer? Uh, semiconductor layer. Benefit of that is that it, it creates a scenario where electricity, if they are focused here, they want to go. Okay, they are conductor, uh, uh, semiconductor, it will go. But again, there will be enough density because it's not a conductor, all uh, flux line will not go there. Some electrons are like, dude, it's not convenient here. I want to spread out. Benefit, now you have spread out the electrical load. You do not have hotspot at the edges. That's the first thing you do with semiconductor layer. That's why all high voltage cables that are buried have that uh, semiconductor layer. Now, semiconductor layer reduces strain. Then you put insulator. Now, insulator defines your voltage. Even though you may say this cross section may be able to carry, let's say, uh, 10 megawatts at, uh, let's say, 100 kb, 200 uh, megawatts at 200 kb. But here's the deal you may not be able to do that because of the insulator. Insulator defines what is the voltage limitation. The conductor does not care about the voltage, but insulator does. So, your semiconductor layer is it good enough to dissipate that kind of flux? Is insulator strong enough to, like, I got this? So that defines your voltage limitation. So once you bury it, you're like, hey, I think we can change the switch gear on both sides and just like upgrade the voltage. No, 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 no. You have to uh, understand that part. Insulator is the limiting factor here. Then you put another semiconductor layer to reduce strain. Because here's the, if you have lines that are not properly balanced out, you will have concentrated spot. That concentrated spot is short circuit, flat out. Like again, it will not happen instantly, but over time it will happen. And again, these cables are idiotically expensive. So people are like, how about, and again, you're transferring gigawatts of power. So let that sink in. What happens if you're like, just 1% of that is focused in that area. That cable is like, bro, what the hell? So we distribute that thing. So basically this sandwich, semiconductor layer, insulator and semiconductor layer allows everything to be equally distributed radially. So you do not have to worry about hotspot. That's awesome. Then you put grounding layer on top of it. That grounding layer allows uh, that leak currents to go somewhere safely. And in certain scenarios, again, depending on design, depending on a specification, you can find grounding layers that are so strong that they can handle fault currents. In some scenarios, they will like, do, do not use that fault uh, layout. It's just for grounding, like rough groundings, like uh, potential, uh, basically leak currents management. And again, leak currents will happen because you have to understand if you have ludicrously high voltage line here, like a naked conductor here, you put your hand next to it, you will get shocked because again, air cannot stop it magically. It's like air needs like, you know, one meter around it to be like, bro, I can stop it now. So same happens here is insulator can stop it. That is true, but it needs full thickness. Now here's the deal. Nothing is perfect. So some things always leak out, like no matter what you do, some things will always leak out. Ideally, very little. Nothing. But when you're transferring megawatts, very little is still a lot. So fundamentally drain leak current has to be done. And again, this also allows that flux line situation not to happen. It allows like a radial dissipation. Then you put armor or jacket. Um, again, you may have armored jacket. <laughs> that depends on environment. Again, you are dealing with like sometimes it's put into, um, you know, uh, metallic pipes, especially underground burial. If it's not very deep, so they will put steel pipes, then they'll put the cable inside it. So it does not need armor on top of armor. That's very expensive. So they'll just use jacket. But in some scenarios where the cable is nakedly buried, they're like, bro, you have to put armor plus the jacket. It's environment based. And again, if you are talking about something that has to go in under seabed, they will select material that are specific to resistant to salt water. 
So that's the construction behind it. Again, you have conductor, depending on your cost, what material, depending on your budget, uh, what structure, compact or compressed. And then you have semiconductor layer, uh, then you have insulator, then another semiconductor layer, then the grounding layer, then the armor and jacket that you actually see. So that's the construction side of it. Now, you have to understand this aspect. We are talking about some seriously high power. So the moment you cross 1000 free, it's beyond normal person. You and I may be able to work on electric system. I do work on electric system, uh, but it does have a limit. That shall not cross 1000 volt. The moment you are like, hey, we are talking about 11 kV. No, do not touch it unless you have properly trained for that. So rules are completely different. It does not even make sense. So you have to understand, it should be only managed by trained staff. If you do not have trained staff, the moment you turn it out, it will go boom. So you have to understand this is very serious. And then uh, bend radius also have to be followed. Why? Because of the insulator. So what is there? There is a conductor, there is an insulator, and then there is a core outside, uh, casing outside. But if you bend it very uh, tightly, again, every company will define it. Like what is the bend radius? And if they say like, dude, give it like one meter don't bend it like tighter than one meter and you bend it tighter there is a chance that conductor inside will become too compressed and start to push towards the grounding shield consequence that place insulator is now thin at that point in time the moment you put full voltage there is like bro i'm out so that's why bend radius has to be followed very seriously so if somebody is like hey 11 kv has this sort of bend radius eh, you know what let's say in future they have to upgrade it's like i'll just use the same cable conduit and let's just put 33 kv yeah good luck Good luck, that will not end well. So fundamentally, bend radius have to be followed. Like manufacturer will tell you and you have to follow. And again, sometimes if they are uh, planning out for long term, they will be like, dude, let's, let's be even more conservative. Let's just take our safety. And then termination. Now this part is idiotically complicated. Why? Because you have grounding layer right there and you have a conductor that could have very high voltage, 100 kV, 500 kV. So it always want to make love to grounding layer because it's again, look at that. It's very close to each other. It's always want to be there. So these sort of flux lines starts to happen where it's like it just, electricity just wants to make love. So you that's why you will always see whenever some professional is doing this, they will always measure thing. Why? Again, the uh, company that designed this cable will do the, this sort of testing and they're like, dude, you need at least this much area to dissipate those sort of flux line again how do you insulate it how do you terminate it all that have uh, regulations this may look oh it's just uh, like you split it you knock it no one no the moment you send a full voltage the insulator will break down near the uh, shielding area that's why like everything has to be measured properly this thing is not easy and it has to be handled with care you are dealing with gigawatt class power you have to respect it not a joke serious so we come to the final aspect, balance. And as Thanos said, everything must be balanced. So reality is that this is ironic scenario where you have cheaper overhead lines that are actually better. Many times it's like, dude, you pay for it, you get better thing. Here it's completely opposite. Overhead lines will be always better. No matter what you do, it will always be better. Electrically speaking, it will be cheaper, better. Uh, it will have long lifespan. How long? We already have transmission lines that are one century old. So we know that it works. Uh, repairability, again, you can see the fault. And it's, it's very easy. Very Majority of the country can do it. But majority of the country cannot build, uh, you know, because insulation for those high voltage are very very tedious like it's almost like semiconductor level manufacturing technology it's very rare that any country can just like, oh i'm just gonna make the insulator nah bro <laughs> especially if the moment you start to cross 135 kv the moment you open your mouth for hvdc yeah good luck with that so but we still need underground in some cases you have to do underground for some cases. for example rich people again i'm poor so i do not know this sort of luxury but if you are uh, you know rich person you do not want electrical lines going to now nah, it's like no bro no and that's why you will see any new property that are being built generally will not have any lines. And again, they will may not even have 11 kV lines. Uh, that 11 kV line would be buried. But if you are talking about like Saudi Arabia, certain towns literally have buried 135 kV line also. It's like, how? Again, they're rich. So in some scenarios, property value matters. So at that point in time, what hurts the property value is poles. And again, there is a logical reason also. For example, let's say a farmer is there in like, you know, there was a dam. So they want to take away this farmer's land so they can put electric pole on top of it. Again, that may not be desirable all the time. And again, not to mention if you are keep uh, crisscrossing uh, countryside with, uh, you know, poles, where the heck you gonna get your grains from? So in those sort of scenarios, you may have to be like, bro, we have to bury it. So you have to understand that fundamentally with capacitance loss, uh, AC line burial is flat out inefficient. The cables flat out only comes up with warranty of like 20 to 40 years compared to 50 years. And not to mention with actual real world experience, we know it will uh, you know, outlast that. So 
fundamentally in some scenarios you do have to go underground offshore wind farm you do not have any other option like how the heck you going to are you going to build a bridge like the moment you cross 80 km you have to use uh, you know high edge high voltage dc and high voltage dc puts even more strain on the insulator so insulator becomes more expensive so you have to do that you have to balance those out uh, crossing seas for example uh, let's say london wants to make love to some other places and they're like hey i want to transmit power from let's say uh, australia you are crossing sea you can't bit pole on top of it you have to go under uh, basically doing this so they have to do it. i mean i'm not joking they are actually planning that so that's what it is so and land right issue is a very serious thing i specified like many farmers do not like their land to be compromised and i get that if i were there, there i'll get that and again weather hazard is a logical reason many times you may have like you know trees that just keep making love to the lines and then this is this is what happens when electricity fall. lightning falls on a wooden pole it just exploded like attack on titan but you get that point uh, so there is always a balance like you always have to balance. if you can choose every engineer will choose overhead uh, but if given the other constraint like new property being built generally is, it will be underground if they have to cross sea it has to be underground uh, those sort of scenarios given those constraint you select the best option that you can so that's the balance aspect of it. you must balance these things out so try to use overhead as much as possible bury it as less as possible from cost reason but again if you're rich go you alone it bury everything like there i'm reasonably sure at least one or two company are working on like underground uh, uh, basically substation i know there is an underwater substation so let's see so this was my presentation on high voltage cables hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it with my friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching